the shots would go. Oh, 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 sorry. I was just reliving that first half in my mind, and wow, was it ever bad. But Chelsea emerge, one nothing winners, courtesy of Captain America. Let's get into it. And blue is the color. Greetings! Welcome back to Couch Critic with me, Dennis P. For what is another Chelsea match review, more specifically a tactical synopsis of Chelsea's performance at Stamford Bridge against West Ham. Before I get into all that, ladies, gentlemen, brothers, sisters, please do me a big favor. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification button to keep up with the latest and the newest. And of course, I gotta let you know about my sponsor. They go by the name of Major League Socks. And fellas, if you ever want to walk in the footsteps of greatness, you know what to do. Hit them up. The link will be in the description. Okay, so Chelsea played host to West Ham and emerged one nothing winners at the death. And it was Christian Pulisic, Captain America, who delivered the hammer blow. And no pun intended there, but you know what it is. Chelsea emerged one nothing winners. In this match review, you're going to be looking at shock creation. We're going to be looking at the difficulty Chelsea have in the low blocks, trying to break down teams that are playing with a back five. We're going to be looking at Thomas Tuchel's substitution patterns. And, you know, of course, the man of the match, Christian Pulisic. Okay, so the story of the season so far has been Chelsea's inability to effectively break down low block defenses and create goal scoring opportunities. And I've been saying for as long as I can remember that Chelsea's biggest problem is they just don't have a facilitator of the offense in the middle of the pitch. Somebody that can like dribble past, you know, create, you know, dictate the tempo of the game and, you know, create goal scoring opportunities. But that's not the only problem. I think that a lot of the times when we do get our preferred strikers in goal scoring regions, um, the problem that we run into is that their decision making in that final area is is poor. The spacing between uh, the defenders is is very 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 tight. Uh, you need somebody that's going to make that quick decision to strike the ball, and I think that like with the play personnel that we had on the pitch yesterday, it was one too many touches, one too many times. You know, Mason Mount getting the good areas, and instead of just firing off a shot, he's either looking to you know release it off to the wing or you know take that one extra touch and then, you know, skies it over the bar. I mean, same thing can be said for Werner the entire season long. That guy has just been completely caught in his head. You know, he doesn't want to use his instincts to get him, you know, goal scoring opportunities. So when you see him in positions where, you know, you want to see him like to strike the ball first time, he's taken one touch, he's taken two touches. And then by the time it gets to that third touch, the defense has either collapsed on him or, you know, it's a, it, you know the, the, his touch takes him away from goal. Again, I think that this is more than just, you know, the defense that we're facing. This has a lot to do with Chelsea's mentality on the pitch. You know, you see guys, instead of taking on shots, they're looking for the easy layoff to the, to the flanks and stuff like that. And as soon as you switch it out to the flanks, the angles that we're trying to exploit in order to score goals is just not there anymore. You know, you're looking for a cross and hope, hopefully somebody gets on the end of it. But, you know, in this particular game, West Ham changed their shape again. We're seeing that a lot this year in the, in the Premier League. Teams changing their shape to play Chelsea because I think it's been figured out that Chelsea just struggle when they're playing, you know, when the spaces between defenders are three to five meters, you know. So West Ham basically played a 5-3-2, had no intention of trying to attack had no intention of getting forward. They were looking for a point. They obviously have their Europa League game uh, in the midweek, and they were focused on that. But with that said, you know, Chelsea have to learn to be a little bit more nimble when, you know, the spaces are so tight. And we just don't have the ability to do that. I mean, with the exception of maybe Ruben Loftus-Cheek, who was camped out, you know, on the right wide, wide midfielder road, uh, role, um, he was the only one that was really looking to take people on. But again, with the position that he started at, it wasn't like even when he did, you know, dribble pass and, you know, uh, link up play well. The problem was the, the position that he was left in on that right flank didn't really give him a lot of options in terms of where to play the next ball. And, you know, when you're playing a 3-4-1-2, I think that the problem that you run into is you need that, that, that attacking three to be very, very effective. 
very, very effective to uh, in order to influence the, the final third. They need to be, you know, all over the pitch. They have to work really hard. They have to be able to, like, dribble pass and get in, in behind because you're not necessarily getting a lot of that from the flanks. You know, our, our wingbacks or our wide midfielders, as, as Ruben loftus Chief played today, aren't looking to really get into that box. They're really looking to, like, provide width. And in the case of, you know, Alonso, what we had was he was the one that was actually looking to invert and get into the box. And it left Timo Werner extremely wide to try and expand the pitch a bit more. And, you know, I just don't think that Chelsea, this game and games past, when we're attacking with our 3-4-3, 3-4-1-2, we just don't have enough box presence to affect the amount of defenders that, you know, West Ham are throwing at us. You know, ultimately, um, I think... Chelsea need to be more brave but at the same time Thomas Tuchel said in, in his uh, his post match that as much as we wanted to be more on the front foot more in possession more you know more thrust going forward the worry was that you know West Ham are very good on the counter very organized they've orchestrated how to you know break in numbers and hurt teams I and mean, they they've done it to us in the past so I guess there was a little bit of like trepidation and caution uh, in Chelsea's build up play that you know if we get caught out you know, we, we could be punished severely. But at the same time, I mean, there, there's there's how many ways to play this game? It's either you play with the bravery of trying to score a goal or, you know, you play with the trepidation of trying to prevent a counter. And I feel like too often this season, Chelsea have not committed enough bodies forward to affect the final third. Um, when you got like five at the back and then, a, uh, you know, a band of three and then, you know, you know, one or two attackers trying to press from the back. It makes it very difficult for Chelsea to score goals, create goal scoring opportunities. And, you know, in these instances, you want somebody to just be the lock picker, just to be somebody that can dribble into space, somebody that can like make that magical thing happen. Um, you know, I, I, I hearken back to the, the days of Eden Hazard where, you know, nothing's happening for Chelsea in the final third. And then he just dribbles through two or three guys and scores a goal. Last one that I remember of that sort happened to be against West Ham, where he cut, picks up the ball in the middle of the pitch, you know, jinx past two or three guys, and then just does it on his own. Like, you can't, you don't necessarily need somebody of that magnitude, somebody that can just instantly, you know, turn a game on its head, but you definitely need somebody that is going to disrupt the back line somewhat, somebody that is going to throw you something or give you a wild card and have you think, the defense thinking about what he can do, capable, what he's capable of in the ball. I mean, we're not we're not really getting the midfield player where we can just play through teams and you know get guys in behind. And to be honest with you, when you're playing a low block defense, it's very hard to find the space to play it in behind anyway. So what we're finding Chelsea are doing is not committing enough body forward, and we're just recycling possession in and amongst the defenders and the midfielders. And you know, I don't know how many touches like Kai Havertz had this game. I don't know how many touches like Timo Werner had, but. The ones that they did have were very much ineffectual, you know, uh, with the exception of maybe uh, Timo Werner when he probably should have scored getting in behind the defense there. But aside from that, we're not getting meaningful touches from the guys that we want to be scoring goals. And I mean, that's been plaguing us the entire season. Like people bang on about how poor Lukaku has been. But I mean, ultimately, it's the same problem. He's just not getting the service in, you know, and and. You know, granted, some of the some of that just uh, come down to his overall game and his inability to like find you know gaps of space to get into. But at the same time, it's it's really just a servicing. You know, more often than not, Chelsea don't create a lot of chances for our attackers to be effective. And you know, with the shape that we're playing right now, this three four one two, it we need to have that thrust from the midfield, from the wide men, to create you know, just create a numerical advantage or at least even up the numbers there in order to affect the final third. Right now, we're we're basically attacking with three. When you're playing with a back five, where's the space? You know, you, where, is, is N'Golo Conte doing enough getting forward? Is Jorginho getting, doing enough to get forward to put more pressure on the defense? In my opinion, no, they're not, you know. And then you look to Alonso, who's always looking to get forward and usually provides you with box presence. But when he's, you know, inverting, it leaves Timo Werner isolated on the left. Um, I think Ruben Loftus-Cheek had a decent game at wide midfielder again. And again, where you want to see him more effective is in the middle of the pitch, because I feel like that's where he can make him his most impact is with his dribbling, his power and pace, even his ball striking ability. But, you know, I just feel like right now we're not seeing the best of Chelsea because, number one, we don't have that... You know, that, that number 10, that true number 10 that can, like, weave together, be the offensive thinker on the pitch. 
but also because the players that we want to score goals are not being utilized in roles where they can be most effective. Now, I must say this, as we all slept through that first half where Chelsea just created nothing, like I think the expected goals was zero for both teams. That was just a snore fest. Um, it was evident to me that Chelsea just did not have that magic in the final third. They did not have the chemistry. They did not have the understanding amongst the three and the midfielders and the wide, uh, the, you know, the, uh, the, the fullbacks, wingbacks. And, you know, you expect Thomas Tuchel, obviously, to go into halftime, give the team his talk, let them know what's happened. Now, obviously, they weren't expecting, you know, West Ham to play three at the back. So there is an adjustment period to make when uh, you see, you know, maybe we have to come back out and rethink about how we're going to be attacking these teams. But once you get to that, like, 55, 60-minute mark and you still don't see much change, I just feel like Thomas Tuchel takes too long to make substitutions at times. And, I mean, it doesn't really leave the, the attackers who come into the game a lot of time to grow into the match and, you know, find themselves. And I mean, fortunately, we were able to, you know, find, make the difference today. But I was watching that game and I was thinking to myself, wow, man, like we're getting nothing up top right now. There really needs to be a refreshing up there. Maybe, you know, a little bit of jadedness, a little bit of like this frustration is settled in on that, you know, that front three. Um, it's time to make a change. And I don't think that Thomas Tuchel made a change to the setup until like somewhere in and around like the 70, 75 minute mark, somewhere around there. And like, I don't know, man. I just feel like sometimes if you want to impact the game, you need to make those changes a lot sooner. I mean, fortunately for Chelsea, uh, Lukaku was able to get in behind and, you know, you know, at least there's a couple opportunities that he got in behind, behind actually. And like, you know, one time uh, Mason Mount got on the ball and instead of like just slipping him in, he would have been clearing on goal. He decided to shoot and it went over the bar. But, you know, it's just recognition again. Like, I think that a lot of the times when, you know, Lukaku gets into good areas, the recognition is just not there. But um, that's a problem for another day. Um, in this particular one, he was able to get in behind. And of course, Dawson, who was having a great match blocking shots and whatnot, brings him down. Chelsea get the penalty and, you know, more important than the penalty itself was that red card because that changed everything. You know, um, obviously, Jorginho misses the penalty and Chelsea, you know, had made the three subs. They had Kristen Pulisic come on, you had Zij come on and, and Lukaku. And, you know, had it not been for that substitution and that tactical switch for uh, for West Ham moving uh, Declan Rice into the back line, I don't think Chelsea would have found the goal. Like, you look at the spacing on this goal here. You look at the spacing that <laughs> that uh, Christian Pulisic has to run into. And you can see this is very much why we scored the goal. This is the first time Chelsea had acres of space like this. Like, there's nobody marking him. And had that not been the case, had we not had, had, we not had that red card, you know, Declan Rice is probably tracking where Christian Pulisic's run is. And you have, obviously... Dawson in there to, to, to just like be the stopgap and I don't think that we have the space to score that goal but you know again we were able to find the breakthrough which is great but I think that ultimately we, we need to be thinking about like impacting the game a little bit sooner like I feel like I've seen so many matches where obviously you know he's using the same lineup over and over again and so many matches where He's not made a substitution to like the 80 minute mark. And I'm like, well, what are you leaving your, your substitutions to feed off of? Like, when do they get the opportunity to get to the grips with the pace and the pace of the match, the, you know, the, the flow of the match? You're not really giving them a lot of runway to find themselves on the pitch. You're basically giving them, you know, the odd 10 minutes here and expecting them to make that difference. You know, fortunately, that red card was, you know, crucial. But aside from that, you know, I don't think that like Thomas Tuchel has made substitutions um, over the course of the season that have impacted the game uh, positively because, you know, they just don't have enough time to, like, come to grips with the match. Now, much has been said about Christian Pulisic and whether or not he is of Chelsea quality, Chelsea standard, and I don't know, man. I, I don't understand the argument here. Like, I, I really do think that Christian Pulisic is the type of player that can play, you know, in a multitude of, of setups for you. You know, he can play wide left, wide right. He can play the number 10. He can play like shadow striker. He's a guy that like, if you give him the opportunities, he can make the difference. I mean, he hasn't really been a model of consistency the last little while. Um, he's 
basically found his form in terms of like the injury record. He hasn't really been injured that much this season, but for whatever reason, maybe it's this Mac uh, fixture pile up, you know, the, the multitude of matches that Chelsea have played, you know, and on the, you know, the inconsistent fashion in which Thomas Tuchel picks his front three. Um, I think that's been affecting him, but overall, I think that we have a very good player, a very good player on our hands. You know, he's only 23, 24 years old and still growing into his best football. And when he gets on the pitch, you know, more often than not, he, he is the type of guy that can make a difference if given the opportunities. But, you know, I think for him, what ultimately he has to find is this consistency, whether it be consistency in matches or consistency in form. Um, whatever it may be, he needs that in order to find his best football. And, you know, lately he hasn't really been playing a lot. And, you know, it's showing he, he came back from the, the international break and was basically played the Real Madrid game, did not perform well in that, and you haven't seen much of him since. And I think Thomas Tuchel likes to ride the form players. He likes to keep them in the lineup and, you know, give them the opportunity to, you know, grow and find their, you know, have their football flourish. And for unfortunately, you know, when when uh, Pulisic lost for him, it was just happened to coincide with Timo Werner finding form. And, you know, um, that left him on the bench for long stretches. But in order to, like, really re-enter the thoughts of the manager, you have to have that performance like he did against West Ham. Like, coming in late in the game, you know, last minute, dying minute, coming in and just banging a goal, which wasn't very easy to take, let's be honest. Like, coming off, striking on his left, you know, coming in from the left, like, that's a very, very tough technique to really, you know, get the timing right and then also to be able to bury it in the corner. That's just a fantastic finish. And it's for these reasons that I think that Thomas Thomas Tuchel, you know, will have to reconsider whether or not he wants to use Pulisic in a more meaningful role going forward, just because he has that quality, he has that ability. You know, I, I agree that sometimes you, you have to be wary of the guy because like consistency has been his issue. But I mean, you, you can't deny the quality that he has. I mean, the guy is a dribbler. He's a guy that can, you know, dribble past uses it very effectively. I mean, he's he's kind of struggled with pace this last little while. I think that that just comes down to this fatigue and jadedness and whatnot. But, you know, more often than not, he can beat you with pace as well. So, I don't know. Going forward, I'd like to see more of Christian Pulisic. I don't know in what role, where we can use him effectively. Uh, maybe it is off the right, but, you know, uh, maybe it is in the number 10 role if he can work harder off the ball. But, just think that there's a role for this guy at the club and with the American owners coming in, you know, <laughs> there's no chance that uh, they're going to be selling Christian Pulisic. So we definitely have to be thinking about going forward, how we're going to be best utilizing this talented American. But on the day he came through for us in the clutch, 90th minute to win it. You can't argue that that's that's just so clutch, so big. And, you know, long may continue for, for his part. But I do think I'm going to wrap it up there. It wasn't much of a game, guys. Let's be honest. The West Ham came and were looking for a point. They set up differently from one from their 4-2-3-1. They were looking. They had a lot of guys on the bench that you would expect to be starting. And, you know, we basically played a West Ham B team that were more focused on the midweek game and you know we saw some great performances some some uh from some guys that we don't normally see the return of Trev Chaloba to the lineup like how welcome was that was he ever composed you know was he ever you know a man mountain back there you know next to Thiago Silva of course um I just want to see more of him I, I feel like I've been banging on about this for a while yes he's had a few bad games but in general when we've given him the opportunities in big matches he stepped up and played incredibly well he needs more opportunities he's a young player still trying to find his football still trying to find his form and whatnot and you know with the amount of outgoings that we have right now i will be doing a small video on this uh, this tony rudiger thing because i think that needs its own special spot uh, i will be looking for, so look for that in the midweek sometime maybe before the united game but uh yeah i really do think that now is the time to start betting in the future and that's trev chalova for me you know, Christensen, obviously, one step out the door, Barcelona, you know, Thiago Silva not getting any younger. So, and Malang, sorry, I don't, I don't know, that's that's just a, a lost cause for me. I don't, I don't really value him uh, as a defender, uh, per se. I mean, he needs his opportunities as well, but yeah, going forward, I don't see him being, you know, one of the preferred defenders. Um, yeah, but, you know, we move, Chelsea, you know, skip through, skip through. <laughs> that is 
a bit high, but hyperbole there. Skip through, struggle to get through that game, find a winner late, courtesy of a red card, and you know, gates of space for Timo or for uh, Christian Pulisic to gallop into the escape a one nothing winner. And you know, we go into that midweek now, and if, for the life of me, can Chelsea please, Thomas Tuca, can we get this win over United? Like, I just don't understand why we always go into these games against, you know, our bitter rivals and, you know, of course, struggling. And then just uh, hand them three points, you know, hand them, you know, you know, a lifeline. It's, it's becoming very, very tiresome. This is an opportunity to put a dagger in their career, in their, in their season, a real dagger. Like, put them to bed, send them to the conference league. Let's just be the ones to do that, man. I, I long for these days again to be the one that just delivers that hammer blow to finish these teams off. And, you know, Chelsea need to be doing that. But, guys, you know what to do. Keep the blue flag flying high and up the Chelsea. Peace.